Welcome back to another edition of Flight Time with Jim Ashura. Today I'm going to tie a West Branch Caddis. And uh, this fly was uh, created by Eddie Reef from Bangor, Maine. And one thing I want to say, I want to correct myself. West Branch, I thought it referred to the Delaware River, but it refers to the West Branch of the Penobscot River in Maine. Although, uh, I got my thought from the West Branch of the Delaware and West Branch Waders, uh, which are L.L. Beans, I believe. But, uh, because the West Branch Waders are so, they're heavy because the water is so cold. And the Delaware River is so cold. The West Branch of the Delaware is so cold. And that's where I was relating my my thoughts to. But I, I'm corrected, and I've I'll always uh, be open to corrections like that. So anyway, we're gonna tie this West Branch caddis, and the hook that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the Lively Legs, the lip splitter, uh, number three o five. This is a barbless dry fly hook standard length and I'm going to tie this in a size 16 now caddis I mean if you want true caddis uh, hooks true caddis hooks are one extra short they're actually short shank hooks because if you look at the uh, if you catch caddis and look at their bodies their wings are almost twice as long as their bodies. That's why the short shank hook uh, is uh, used for the caddis. But we're going to use a standard hook. I'm going to use some brown thread. And we're going to put a base of thread on the hook and bring that back inside the point of the hook just where it hangs inside the point first thing we're gonna put on a uh, we're gonna put the body on first and another thing uh, to say about this fly first of all the thread you want to match the color of the body or complement the color of the body and this caddis could be tied in any tied to match any caddis hatch whether it be olives or Tans or granums or which whatever October caddis. So I'm gonna I'm actually gonna tie this one in a uh, an olive color. It is gonna be like a light olive color. And I'm the dubbing I'm going to use. This is a rabbit blend dubbing. So I kind of want that scruffy look on the body. I'm gonna turn that upside down so I can get my fingers and right inside right close to the hook shank and uh, you don't have to be you want a skinny noodle but you don't have to be real light on this and you also don't have to make a really tight noodle but if you add more if you have more dubbing it actually if your dubbing is heavier on the body it actually is not a bad idea because after you get the body wrapped you could take your dubbing teaser and tease that out and if you have a small amount you might rip all of it off so I'm gonna come up you know about three quarters or two-thirds of the way up I'm gonna pull the real long guard hair though and it looks like we got a couple of them that are being stubborn and then we can go ahead and take our dubbing teaser I'm going to take my dubbing teaser and this is the 22 bore brush and just tease out the bottom and if you tease out the sides just push them to the bottom pull them to the bottom on this case just kind of want that little bit more of a scruffy look underneath there. 
Now we're going to go to the wings. And for the wings, you can use uh, mallard flank feathers. You can use wood duck flank feathers. You can use hen, uh, hen hackle feathers. But the thing you want is, you want that, that shape. And also, using the different kinds of feathers, it gives you the different... Uh, like the bars on it, it'll give you the different molted look to them. And I'm going to use a pair of these. And if you see here, you see that dark spot in the center, and this one I think is a little bit better. See that dark spot in the center? What I actually did was put a small drop of uh, head cement on there, and then I just pulled it with my fingers, and this will help keep it, help keep it, its shape a little bit better. And that better one, I'm going to put on the bottom. And we're going to line up those tips. And I'm going to kind of size that up. And even before I go wrapping it, I'm going to go ahead and remove a lot more of this feather. And I'm thinking that the dark spot is probably going to be the correct size. Let me hold that there. Okay, that's not bad because I'm going to pull it and it's going to pull it together a little bit. And we're going to hold them right on top, flat on top. And then I'm going to hold them in position there. We're going to give that a couple of looser loops. Then I'm going to pull that. You saw the thread move there. Kind of want to get that. There we go. I'm going to pull them a little bit more to size. And there we go. We're moving it. Okay, try to keep them on top. Now I'm going to tighten it down to secure them. There we go. We even got that little bit of a tent shape around the body. And that's the caddis wings are, are tent shaped over the body. That is one way that we distinguish between a caddis fly and a stone fly. Stone fly wing lays flat on the body, and the caddis wings are tent shaped over the body. Here we have our wing. Now I'm going to take. Now for legs, there's a couple ways you can do this. You could go ahead and take your bodkin needle and just grab a couple of small just a couple of uh, wing fibers and pull them down kind of gives you that leg there but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually going to trim those off There we go, and you could you could use a regular hackle, a regular uh, soft hackle on there, but I'm going to take this as a partridge, and I'm just going to take this small amount here, just maybe you know six to six or eight fibers, and I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to tie them in right on the bottom there. I'm just going to to put the fibers just to the maybe just slightly inside the point of the hook and we're going to secure that Sorry. and then we could trim that excess
And now because we have such a large head there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more uh, dubbing and make the head out of the dubbing. And what I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use the Hemingway deer hair dubbing. And one of the reasons for this also is it's scruffy. So I'm just going to take a small amount of the deer hair dubbing with both the, the long hairs and the short fibers. And this is a dark brown. I'm going to go ahead and grab my whip finish before I go on. Give it three to six wraps. Take my... Now I'm going to take my dubbing teaser again. And well, that lighter that lighter fiber there, that's actually one of the long deer hairs. But we can also scruff this up a little bit. And this will actually help make it uh, look like the legs. Again, just on the sides is good and kind of pull them to the bottom. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and put my head cement on there. And I'm not going to worry about the size of the drop. I'll get right through that dubbing. And I still haven't bought myself a new thing of Sally Hansen's yet. So I'm going to take a feather and I'm going to put that through the eye. Maybe. Come on, get in there. There we go. We get that through the eye and clean out that eye. And here we have a light olive West Branch caddis. I know this is going to work great on my river. I have no doubt. I have no doubt this would work anywhere in the world where there is caddis hatches. You can also go ahead if you would like put a shuck on it, just a couple of wisps of your uh, Zilan or even a couple of wisps of poly yarn just off the tail there. The shucks are usually, when you observe them on the water, they are clear in the middle and a little bit brown on the edges. So just a couple wisps off the back there. I use boot lace myself for the shucks. But uh, there you have it. Hope that you learned something from this video. Hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Please refer me to your friends. Please visit my sponsors and let them know that I sent you. Leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase any of the flies that I tie, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym. And if you don't see it there, just simply send me a message and I will get right back to you. And we'll figure out what you're looking for. And we'll get that tied up. And most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.